Hi, this is Boone Slot Car Garage. Let's do this. Hi, I'm Boone and this is Boone Slot Car Garage. And tonight, well tonight we're gonna go ahead and take a break from the tunnel project. Yep, just finished up tunnel video, got it out there. And I need a little bit of reprieve before I go and attack the second portion of that because well, there's a couple things that I'm kind of bouncing around inside my head and I could use just a little bit more time to kind of sort it all out. So this is the perfect time to do this video right here. And what this video is, is it my idea? No, it came from this right here, which is the Facebook group. And there's a guy on the Facebook group, his name's Mike Landis. And he came up with a real ingenious way to custom build track. So he went ahead and he posted it up on the Facebook group and got a really good response. He's like, hey, look what I did, guys. And everyone's like, whoa, how'd you do that? And he tried to explain it and stuff like that. And next thing you know, they're like, well, why don't you have Boone, you know, why don't we do a video on this? So Mike gets in touch with me and says, Boone, I don't do videos. Could you do a video on this? And I said, sure. So went ahead and took a look at everything and talked with Mike and yeah, <laughs> this is gonna be a cool video. So what is it exactly? Well, say that you're laying out track and you've come up with your dream layout, right? You've come up with just the right amount of corners, right amount of straightaway, everything else, and it looks, it looks killer, right? But the problem is when you go to connect the last few pieces together, you're a little bit short. And you look at what the diagram is from Scalectric or Carrera or Polycar or whatever, and you're finding that they do not make that track. The track that you need is, is not serviceable. They, they, they don't make it. So what are, you, what are you forced to do? Well, up to this point, you were forced to say, well, it was a cool track, but, I guess I'm going to have to reconfigure a few corners and stuff like that to make up the difference. <clears throat> well, Mike came up with an idea that you can go ahead and take <clears throat> a piece of track and cut it down and make your own piece. Kind of cool. So what we have, I mean, I have three different pieces of scale after track here. You know, you had a little bit of long one, medium one. And then this is, well, let's get these other ones out of my way not this guy this guy this guy right here this is the smallest piece that they make okay well maybe you need something that isn't this size but you need something that's even smaller than this well what do you do well we can make our own piece of track and mike came up with this really cool way of doing it so what we're gonna do is we're gonna slice and dice some track today and I'm going to show you guys how to make your own piece of track. Custom piece. <laughs> cool. All right. So <sighs> grab some Joe. Yeah, you know what? I'm kind of still kind of on a donut kick. So pff, grab a donut and uh, let's do this. Okay. So here we are. It's a little bit of change of scenery from my other videos that I've had out. Actually cleared off my workbench to a point where we can actually use a real bench <laughs> so yeah we'll give this a whirl see how it works so to get to what we need for this we obviously need our, our piece of sacrificial track here um we need some tape some different needle nose pliers some wire snips i have a hacksaw couple different razor knives, some super glue, uh, a flat-handed screwdriver, which is a little guy, a flat file, and a couple different ways of measurement, okay? So I have a couple different rulers out here, and I have a square, right? 
And we're also going to need some tongue depressors. And we're going to need one of these little guys. And what this guy is, is like a popsicle stick, all right? So I got this at the just the craft store. And these are craft sticks. And the cool thing about these is that they're not balsa, all right? You could use balsa for this, but balsa is not as strong, okay? It's, you know, it's a very light wood. Something like this, I opt to go with something with a little bit more structure to it. So kind of like a popsicle stick has, has more structure to it. It's not made out of balsa. I don't even know what wood they're made out of, but they're not made out of balsa. <laughs> so here is this. It has the schematic right down in here as far as what they are. And it doesn't really make much sense to me. So, but what I'm going to do is I'll just go ahead and put this right there and... <laughs> this, this is what I'm going to use on this. So, in in the big thing about these, just so I point this out, it's not so much the 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 you know the width, it's the height. Okay, so it's the height that we're really going after here, and the reason for that is let me go ahead and I'll move this off to the side. Okay, the reason behind that is that we're going to take this popsicle stick. And we're going to mount it down inside here in this trough area, okay? Well, the cool thing about the height is if we come down to the end here and where these tabs come off that connect, okay? This guy is the same height of what this rail is down here, the support, okay? So, cool thing about this is that if we mount this up, and we have the other track coming into it, it's going to have the same height to it, okay? Meaning that we're going to be able to control as far as the height up on the surface of the track. You're not going to have a notch or anything else. It'll be a smooth transition. So just want to go ahead and point that out with these. Now, again, like I said at the beginning of it, this type of slicing dicing that we're going to do is for the fact that if you're building a layout and you come to your little schematic here from scale electric for sport track and you're going through here trying to find you know the length that you need and you can't find it this could be your answer okay so kind of a cool thing it's, it's a really cool idea that mike came up with so Again, I mean, they, they have their, their short straight, their quarter straight. They've got their, the, well, the, yeah, all sorts of different straights. <laughs> okay. So the, what we're going to do today is we're going to go ahead and make something that fits outside the realm of what they have available. So really cool idea. All right. So when we come back. Let's go ahead and let's get started and slice and dice in our track. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is find out exactly what size of track that we need to build, right? So what we're gonna do is, well, first off, you need to you need to know the size that you you want to do. So that's it's a number one, all right. Then go ahead and get your piece of sacrificial track. Now the track piece that I'm going to make today is going to be very small. I'm going to make a two inch piece of track or a 50.8 millimeter piece of track. So something that is, is quite different than what scale electric actually can provide us. Okay. So yeah, let's push the envelope a little bit and let's make ourselves a little piece of track. So first thing that we need to do is a, locate your sacrificial piece of track and then take this track and we'll rotate it over and what we need to do is remove the rails okay so the rails right up in here we're going to remove those so how are we going to do that well take your little flathead screwdriver and what we're going to do is on these tabs right here we are going to just fold these guys up like so and what this will do is, let me get this other one. Okay, so we'll just release those. 
And so these little tabs, you wanna fold these up. You see how they're down. And they're holding the rail into the track. So we wanna release the tension off those and bring them up. And then what we're gonna do is once we have all those up, I can peel that rail out. So let me go ahead and I will release all the tabs and we come back, we'll go ahead and get our rail out of this piece of track. At this point, I have one set of rails removed and then you have these little, the end pins that slide in to the end of the rails. These guys, as soon as you take it out, these guys will, will fall right out. So make sure that they don't uh, fall on the floor and you lose these little guys because you're gonna need these for this uh, little operation. So there they are right there, there's those two. And you can see on the, uh, on the track, there's a little bit of a ridge that the rail actually sits down into, okay? And you can see the tabs on the backside and, and the holes right there. So let me go ahead and rotate this over and you can see that I've, see, whoop, that guy just came right out. So as soon as you release tension, they fall right out. So let's go ahead and we'll remove both sides. So I'll get that one out too. And then once you release those tabs, the rails come out pretty easy. I mean, they just, they just come right out. Now, don't force these guys out because if you're, if you're trying and you're forcing them out, then you haven't got the tabs all the way bent where they need to go so they can slide out. So just spend a little bit more time, get your tabs kind of bent out, and then the rails will, will come right out. Okay, we don't, wanna, we don't wanna bend these guys. We wanna keep them as straight as possible. So actually, I'm just kind of bending the track a little bit like this and it's popping right out. Now, this side is a little bit stuck. So I'll come back over and just kind of hit this lightly and find the, looks like it's this one that's being the stubborn one. So we'll get that. It's kind of hard to do standing up, but hey, we got it. So there we go. Got our rails out, all right? So we'll go ahead and we'll put those in a safe spot over here. We'll put those over there. So they're where I know where they're at. And now we have our track. So at this point, we need to find out, you know, measure out exactly what we need. So we come back, let's go ahead and get that all measured out. So we're back here and I went ahead and I measured out the piece that, that I'm gonna build. And it's a two inch piece. So I just went ahead and measured it out two inches or, you know, let's see here. That'd be, looks like five centimeters, okay? So two inches or 50.8 millimeters or yeah. <laughs> There's all sorts of different ways to measure it. So, what I did is measured it out and then I just went ahead and scribed just a little, little notch here on both sides, okay? So there's one on both sides. The reason why I went ahead and decided to do that is on the back side of this, two inches or 50.8 millimeters, if I measure this as so, is gonna put me right on the back side of this tab, okay? So when I put my rail back in here, not only is it gonna be mounted in the front, but it's also gonna be mounted in the rear. Now, I'm doing this just because, well, it's gonna be a little bit more stable in there, but say you need something that falls in between, okay? Like Mike, he made one that was an inch and a half. So an inch and a half, let's see here would put us just right forward of that tab, okay? So it is possible even to make one that's shorter. It's just when it comes time to mounting your, um, your rails back in, you're not gonna have two mounting points. You only have one. And that's where the super glue would come in, where you would glue onto that, that ridge right here, where the rail actually mounts up to, okay? And then that would secure that rail into place. So 
just kind of want to point that out. There are multiple different ways that you can go ahead and utilize this technique. Okay. Don't let, don't let these tabs depict on the size track that you're going to make. All right. There's, there's ways to, to bend the rules and, and think outside the box on it. So now that I have that scribed, what I need to do now is take, see, I could take my square or take a ruler here. And what I need to do is line that up and then go ahead and cut the track. Okay. So what I am going to do is I got my razor knife and I'm going to come right over here. I'm going to line that guy up on that side, line him up on this side. And then I'm just going to go ahead and lightly score the track. Okay. So this will give me definite line of attack. There we go. So now I have my cut line. Then I'm going to go ahead and, and cut this piece of track off. So again, with, with scale electric, you can do this with a razor knife. Um, with the other brands that are out there, you're probably going to have to resort to like a hacksaw or something along those lines. This guy obviously is probably a little bit too short to do this. You'd want a larger hacksaw so you could cut the full distance of it. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut off this piece of track. And when we come back, we'll start figuring this thing out. Well, here we go. <laughs> okay, so we're at the point of no return. We went ahead and sliced off our track with that razor knife. And we have now our, our piece of track in front of us that's going to work. At this point, you might want to go over to your layout, put it in there, and just see if if you got it exactly the way that you need it. If not, well, on this track, you got another side to give it another whirl. So you got two chances on each piece of track. <laughs> okay, so I'll go ahead and set this off. We don't need that, but here we go. We're back to this. So what do we need to do? Well, go ahead and take your square. So we have the square and line it up here and make sure that your line is is nice and flush nice and and square all the way all the way through it's nice and true so if it's off a little bit because of the little bit of tabs that are on the underside a little bit of a fuzzy there but if it's off just a little bit go ahead and take your flat file okay find a a little piece of wood or or like this a little piece of mdf and you can set that off to the side and then take your flat file and just go ahead and massage that down a little bit so that you have a nice true edge to it. Now, I recommend using a file over a piece of sandpaper. Okay, and the reason for that is, well, there's a couple. A file, a flat file, if you see, it's pretty much going to go the full distance of your track. Okay, so when you're sanding it, it's going to create a truer, you know, a truer um, radius or edge to this. If you use a piece of sandpaper and you start going onto it, well, the problem is, is A, you're not covering the whole distance. And if you start digging like so, you might actually amplify the problem by digging this out, you know, and not making it true. So... Flat file is a good way to, to square that all up. All right, so now that we have our piece of track done here, what we need to do is find our rails, and now we need to trim off the rail to fit inside of our piece of track. All right, so now we have our rail, <clears throat> and I went ahead and set it onto the mounting area on our piece of track. So. You can see that the tabs are lined up on the underside here, okay? So I have that set in there just like so. And I went ahead and took a piece of tape just to hold it into place. Now, 
<clears throat> on the edge of this, okay, let me let me take this other one and I'll put him in. The rails actually have a left and a right, so it's just the tabs are gonna go in here. Okay, so we can set it like so. So it's right up against the edge there. And then we have this right here, okay? So if we bring this around, okay. What we need to do is we need to scribe a line onto our rail right there. So we know exactly where we need to cut it, okay? So what I'm doing is taking the other piece of tape and putting it down on the side here so I create my cutting point for the rail, all right? So go ahead and get that guy out and take this guy out. And now we have our rail here. So now what we need to do is go ahead and cut our rail. Now, the you could take your, your wire snips if you wanted to and right on to the inside of this and then go ahead and snip it like so, okay? Don't go all the way through it. If you go all the way through it, you're going to crush this box, okay? And it's it's not going to work for you. So go ahead and let's just snip it up on both sides here. So I'll do that, and hopefully this, this works like so. And then I'll take this guy over on this. And these rails are, are very soft, so... They, uh, they cut real easy, and there it is. Okay, so now we have that on both sides, okay? And now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and bend this back, bend it back down, and it's gonna just release off for us. So now we have our rail. I'll set him down. Now, <clears throat> on the side of this, when you're, when you're bending it up and down, it could distort, whoop, let me get this over in camera. It could distort just the end of this right there. So what we need to do on that is we have our needle nose plier and we can just kind of work the edge of this a little bit, okay? Kind of straighten it up and get that to lay flush again. Same thing on the side. So go ahead and, and hit it. And we can do is get that box back true again. So now that we have this, we can go ahead and mount it into here and see exactly where we're at. And if you see, I'm nice and square here and I'm nice and square there. So one rail down, I got three more to go. So we come back, I'll be at the point where we have all our rails cut. All right, so I have all my rails cut. So here's all these little guys, all right? And you'll notice something about the rails. I didn't point this out before, but I'll, I'll point it out right now. This tab is a little bit bigger than this tab, okay? And that is, let me grab a rail we didn't touch. The, the rail, when it goes towards the end of the track, okay? So when it's on the on the, the side, that's actually going to fasten to the other piece of track when they, they click together. That tab, this tab right here, is smaller than this tab, okay? So the hole in the inside. So this guy fits like so. Now, you could put it in here like that, but it doesn't quite fit as nicely <laughs> if it's put in, you know, the proper way, obviously. So I wanna go ahead and point that out as far as the tab size. Smaller tab goes to the outside part of the track, okay? That obviously we didn't cut on. So let me go ahead and put this down. Now, this next step, is probably the most tedious out of all the steps. And that is, is well, if you have your your rail, okay, so your rail is, is down inside, okay, 
Now it has these little cuts that are they're down here. Uh, yeah, let me grab. Well, no, we can use this one. So you'll see these two little areas down here. You'll see this one. Uh, get something to point at. That is all the material's been taken out of. All right. And then you'll have this other rail, which is right here, that has like this little tab onto it, okay? You see that? Now, that tab is for the bottom of the pin. So let me grab this pin, set that up there. And you'll see that it has material that's been machined out of it that fits over the top of this. So when it sits down in here, it rests into place. See if I can get my, there we go. So it'll rest into place, all right? And likewise, this area over here that's been removed, the material, is so when the, well, let me grab this. <laughs> so when it goes together and it clicks together, the pin on the opposite seat, uh, piece of track will go into that trough area and then your rail is over the top, okay? So it makes connection, it is what help makes connection between the tracks. So what do we need to do? Well, we're gonna need to yard out some material in the inside here. So what I have done over on this side is that I have cut that material out on both sides, okay? I cannot make this guy precise as far as the way having that little eyelet in there to create for, for that to fit just perfectly onto it. So just go ahead and cut that straight across on both sides, okay? Make sure you compensate for enough room so that, see I haven't done it up there, but enough room so that tab can slide into that, okay? So what we have is, I've yarded out here, I have this guy, which let's see here, let's just utilize this. So I'll go ahead and put him on there there's our opening and then uh here's this and he slides right inside okay so now we have our pin that's going to connect into the other piece of track okay so what we need to do is just go ahead and take your razor knife and just bring that back just a little bit and I came back into that let's see here if we go by centimeters a little over a half a centimeter is how far I went in um, probably it looks like three quarters of a centimeter okay so not very far but the other thing you need to keep in mind is the depth you want to make sure that the depth is down far enough so when this rest in there, the rail actually can seat into the, the recess of the trough, okay? So we wanna make sure you take enough material out of the bottom down here so that when this rail, when this little pin goes in, so the pin goes in, okay? It's not pushing up on the rail and the rail is coming out of the track. Okay, so you want to take enough out that that pin's going to sit in there and your rail's going to be flush with the track. Okay, so just need to go ahead and do that on this side of the track that we cut. And, you know, go get another piece of track just to go ahead and line this all up. Okay, you know, it's always, it's all the more tools you have, the more reference points you have, the better off you are. So just go ahead and yard that out. And I still got to do those there. And we come back, we'll go ahead and connect our rails. 
So at this point, I have my material taken out on both sides, and now we need to install the rails back in this. So what I'm going to do is take just a little bit of super glue, and this is just so that it just kind of secures it into place, just a little extra help. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in the area that I yarded out that, um, that one <laughs> for the pin. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and set this down in here. Okay, so set that down in. And while this is still wet, I'm going to go ahead and put my rail. i got to get the correct rail. And we will set this rail right down. Ah, come on. Right down over the top. So, like so. All right, so now I have that in there. I have a super glue down on the underside. So what that'll do is kind of give us the same, you know, as far as fixing it into place, like it did with how it is from the factory with that, that little eyelet that they made. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and get this and then get that down on the table. And we're going to take these tabs and we're going to bend these back to where they should be and lock our rail into place. So we'll get that, lock that one down, get this one over. And you notice I'm pushing against it over on this one side and then coming down and applying pressure to those tabs. And that way we can lock this into place. So with this one, since I have two tabs, I'm pretty much just going to mount it the way that the factory does right from the get-go, okay? Since I have these two tabs. And as you can see, I mean, that rails right into place. Now, if I was cutting it even shorter and say I only had one tab, then I would take super glue and put a little bit of super glue on this rail just so when I put this down, it's not being hung on just by the front tab. It would have something in here to go ahead and hold it down as well. So just kind of FYI. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set this guy down. And on this one right here that has the factory eyelet, I'm not even going to put any super glue down. I'm just going to go ahead and set that right where it is from the factory. And then go ahead and put my rail in. So, just like so. And now we've got our rail distance and everything else. Our height is good right here. Let me just go ahead and push that a little bit. Our height is good as far as across. Okay. So, there we go. So, we got that in. I'll go ahead and install this, install the other side. And we come back, we got to figure out the underside of this to create a little bit more of a mount to go into the opposite piece of track. Okay, so here we go. I have that all secured in, okay? Looks pretty cool. <laughs> now, Mike had it at this point because the one that he made was just a prototype. And we started talking a little bit and started to figure out as far as what else we could do as far as mounting on this. And because if you, if you look at this, okay, it has the, the two tabs and they come together like so and lock together, okay? But on the side that we cut, it doesn't have any of the little, uh, I like to call tongue pieces that come out, the male side, that'll click into, per se, the female side. Now, this alone, just the way that I have this and goes together, actually is on there pretty good. I mean, really it is. It's 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 on there, okay? Just that little bit of a friction fit that's in the rails is holding this together. But I'd like to have a little bit more support on it just to try to mimic exactly what Scale Electric had. Now, that is where our little tongue suppressor comes in. And our other little piece of, of uh, oh, stir stick or, or popsicle stick, okay? So what I have done 
is I've taken the tongue depressor and went ahead and chopped off both ends of it to create these little, these little tabs right here. And then there's the middle part. Now, won't get to that yet. Let's get to these. So I found out by two of these stacked up on top of each other, it actually is pretty much the same thickness of what this tab is towards the back, all right? So if you take this and we put it into the female side right here, it's actually going to help support the track on the outside. So what I've come up with is, let's go ahead and let's put this in. So I'll go ahead and slide that together. Is this little guy to go right in here, okay? And it holds it right there. And now we have some rigidity built into the side of the track to help hold it together. So, don't wanna just put it in there floating. So what we wanna do is get this back out, okay? So I'm gonna keep that together right there. I'm gonna take a little bit of super glue and super glue these two guys together, okay? So just take a little dab of super glue here, all right? So a little bit here, a little bit there, and put these guys together like so. So now I have these guys. And now what I'm going to do is go ahead and pull this apart. So that's apart. And now I'm going to take a little bit of super glue and put down on this side of the track. Okay, so like so. Now I take this guy that's together and it probably would help if he was dry, <laughs> but I think for this we'll be okay. So let me go ahead and get him in there. And now what I'm gonna do is put him together into this, okay? And I'm doing this kind of when it's wet so I can line it up a certain, whoop, hit the camera, a certain bit and get it just to the spacing that I want, all right? And there we go, go a little bit further. And now what I'm gonna do is let that dry into place. So it's all lined up and right where I want. Now, there is a little tab that's right here. Okay, so this little tab that's right there. Now, if you wanted to, you could go on the back side of that tongue suppressor and maybe notch it a little bit and then move this forward so that it would hook onto that. In fact, you know what? I might just do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this forward a little bit. Hopefully my super glue isn't well, it's sticking to my fingers. Okay, so I'm gonna go just like that so it's over the top of that. Just gives a little bit more of a friction fit. And actually, whoop, actually, if we look down on the side here, it's still up underneath the track, okay? So it's not going to impede with the height or anything else. It's still underneath the rails of the track. So that's a cool thing. So there's that one, all right? So while that one's drying, let me go ahead and work on this. Now, this is the little piece that I have remaining. This guy right here, let's get back to that because I didn't tell you how far I cut it. So I cut it at four centimeters, okay? So this little piece right here is cut at four centimeters. So we have that. Now we have the remainder piece. And what I've done is just taken this, found the center of it, and put scab to line, okay? So now I have two equal parts. And now what I wanna do is go ahead and saw these apart with my hacksaw. So I'll go ahead and cut these and we come back, we'll go ahead and I'll show you how to mount this. 
Okay, so this is all nice and dry now. And you can see how this just goes right in there. So go like that, bam, and it holds it into place, okay? Pretty cool. So now what we're gonna do is the same way that we did this, we're gonna do this little one that's right in the middle, okay? So that little guy is where I have the extra material that was left over. And this is cut at one and a half centimeters, okay? So it's one and a half centimeters thick. So once you cut one, you can go ahead and line that up. So let me go ahead and line this up on that and get it down on my little board right here. And come on, get it like that. Take my razor knife and I'll just scar this and it comes right off. So now I have this piece, which we're gonna use right in here. So same way we did that, same way we're gonna do this one. Put a little super glue on it to help hold it together, like so. I got that one together, all right. So there's that, it's together. I'll go ahead and set that like so. And now we just need to go ahead and put a little bit of super glue. Ooh, that's quite a bit of super glue. So I don't need that much. I'll just go like that. Put the extra on there. And now what we'll do is we'll slide this guy in. And I think I'm gonna slide it in from this side over here onto that, and there we go, okay? So now what I just need to do is line these guys up first, okay? Come on, Boone. All right, so now I got these guys lined up, and I'm just gonna go ahead and wait for that over here to dry. And then I'll have those two tongue pieces so it matches the other side, but, we still have, ah, there it is, our little stir stick. So we come back, we'll go ahead and get this guy put in. All right, so I went ahead and I have this guy all glued in. I actually took a little bit more super glue and just added it to the back side of it just to give it a little bit more strength, okay? Um, you can do that if you'd like or, or not. I just thought, you know, while I have it here, let me just go ahead and give this a little bit more strength to it. So yeah, <laughs> that was my idea. So now if we go ahead and hook this together, okay, so come on, hook together. So now it's together like so, right? And we have our two supports right here that help hold it together. Well, we still have this guy and this guy right here that, I mean, they aren't really holding anything at this point. They're just kind of supporting the track. So what I have kind of come up with, make sure I have the right, okay, there we go. Is that it? No, it's this guy. <laughs> okay, so what I've done is taken this, this little stir stick, all right, and I've cut off two pieces one to fit right here, okay, like so. And then the other is gonna be right here, right? And that's gonna give us a little bit of locking just, just to help it stay together a little bit more. You know, you could do the friction fit, but you know, as the cars go over it and stuff like that, you, you don't need to have this coming apart. You need it to pretty much try to get it to perform as as good as the original, you know, the way it's put together. So what I've come up with is to go ahead and use these guys to go ahead and lock into place. Now you have to yard out a little material. So let me go ahead and take this guy off and I'll take that guy off. Let's get this back apart. So it's back apart. And on the, the side of this, if you can see, right up in here it's kind of hard to see that okay maybe right there okay 
let me get my screwdriver here. I can point it at you. I've notched this just a little bit, taken out that material right here. And what I've done is created a little area for it to sit. So we have this area right here, and it's the same height as what this is. And then this guy is cut to span that distance, okay? So then you just need to go ahead and glue that into place with super glue. Be careful when you're on this side, obviously, because you have your, um, your rails. So what we need to do is go ahead and glue that on. But on this side right here, okay, we want this piece to fit from here, okay, to right to this one right here. And I'm gonna use this guy, this outer, as kind of my guide, okay? I want it to cut down, you know, obviously, down about this height and just notch it back a little bit. And you can do that with your razor knife and take that material out. So, and then again, glue that guy into place. Now, this guy right here, let me go ahead and put this back together. So I'll put this back together, come on, like so, okay. This guy, if you notice, it's a little bit wider than what that notch is. So we're gonna have to take him and just shave him just a little bit to take that material off so that when we put this in, it actually will lock, all right? And then, voila, it's holding it together. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this yarded off. I'm gonna shave a little bit off of this and we should have a functional locking piece of track. Okay. So here we are and I have those glued into place and now we can support these two guys. So if we get this in there and now it's starting to be like a normal piece of track where you're trying to line these guys up and get them all to set in. So if we go like so and we set this guy into place like that and now our tab goes onto the back side and locks into place there. Now this guy doesn't want to come apart. It's actually a new little piece of track. So pretty slick. I mean Mike came up with a really cool idea. So to get this apart again push down the tab just like you would a regular piece of track and we will work this apart like so. Come on, I got this guy pretty tight fit down here, but it comes apart. So, and there we go. We've got ourselves a custom built piece of scale electric track. A little crude on this side with that, <laughs> with this stuff. But if you wanted to, you know, you could paint that out black and uh, it could look like the other pieces of the track. So you could, you could trick your friends, right? So, now what we need to do is go ahead and put this on the layout and see how it performs. So I put it right here, right at the end of the turn, and let's see how this works, you know? I'm kind of interested. So let's see here, I'm not sure which car I have first here. Ah, it's the Porsche, and it worked. <laughs> Slid off the track, but it worked. All right, let's try the, the Seneca. Oh, that's a nice car. I really like this car. Well, cool. So it's successful. It doesn't. It didn't hang up. It 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 worked. It worked out good. I mean, the car comes around. It's a smooth transition. the The rails are are seated down in here, so they're not going to hang up with the uh, the braids on the underside. And yeah, I mean that's. That is pretty ingenious little thing that Mike came up with. So, very cool. It's a success. All right, All right. So, there we go. Another video complete. And we learned through Mike Landis that we can make ourselves some custom scale electric tracks. So, that is really cool. Ingenious idea. And, you know, I think that the slot car community could, you know, could benefit from, from this little thing. So, yeah. So, Again, I want to reiterate something that I kind of touch base at the front part of the video, and that is 
that Mike reached out to me and he showed me his idea, okay? It came through on, well, on this, on the Facebook group. And yeah, and, and that's how this thing came to be as far as video goes. So if, if you guys have anything that you can think of that you want to see, or maybe there's an idea that you have, some of those slot car secrets that are in the back kind of locked away and you want to share them with other people, but you're not a video guy and stuff like that, you might kind of freeze up in front of the, front of the video camera. So <laughs> if you're one of those guys, reach out to me. I mean, we can talk about it, figure it out. You can teach me how you did it and we can put a video together, right? So, I mean, we got this right here, which is the Facebook group and that right there, which is the Instagram group. And I mean, those are two great ways to get in touch with me. And also, also, we also have this and this is the Patreon group. And, and one other thing, there's the buy me a coffee as well. But the Patreon group is really cool. You know, you go in there, you support the channel and stuff like that, and I'm able to give back, and there's a lot more communication and stuff with the Patreons and everything else. I'm putting together a Zoom, uh, a, 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 a whatever they call it, a Zoom, the video chat. So pretty soon we're gonna go ahead and start having video chats with all the Patreons all at one time, private chat. That'll be really cool. And there's some other stuff on there as well. So, and. It, I'm thinking about adding more onto it as well. So I mean, it's just come on over, check it out. And uh, yeah, it's cool. It helps out with the channel and stuff like that. It helps build for supplies, helps, you know, all sorts of different stuff. Because, you know, it, it's a labor of love, but, you know, there is a little bit of cost involved in some of this stuff. But hey, <laughs> enough with the gloomy stuff. Let's get back to some fun stuff. And that was like the slot car stuff, right? So here we go. So yeah, cool idea. Again, thank you, Mike, for, for bringing this to my attention and sharing your idea and your ingenuity with us. I think that is really, really cool. So ah, cool stuff, right? So next time on Boone Slot Car Garage, well, tell you what, I took a little break, did this, Got my kind of my brain fluids flowing and everything else, and I'm ready to attack the tunnel again. So, next video, we'll be back over there, and we're going to be attacking that tunnel. Okay? So, I'll see you guys then. All right? Catch you later. Hi, this is Boone Slot Car Garage. Let's do this.